Some people like being alone. They are happy when they are left alone. But sometimes people make friends. And they don't make any friends. They make friends with only those people whom they are comfortable with and they like. And now that group together hangs out together, goes to places and so on. Similarly, in chemistry, some atoms act in a group. They form a group. That group can have same or different atoms. That is, atoms of same or different elements. And they are combined chemically. And now that group of atoms act as a single unit with a positive or negative charge. Such a group of atoms is known as radical. So radical is a group of atoms of same or different elements combined chemically that act as a single unit with a positive or negative charge. Now, something like this sounds a little familiar. Where have we heard this before? A compound. A compound is defined. It's again a group of atoms of same or different elements combined together and even they act as a single unit. So now what's the difference between radical and a compound? Well, in radicals, you saw that there was a positive or negative charge on the radical. So the difference between radicals and compounds is that radicals, they have a positive or negative charge. They are a group of atoms of same or different elements combined chemically which act as a single unit and they have a positive or negative charge. But compounds, they are the group of atoms which may be of same or different elements. They are also combined chemically to act as a single unit. But they are neutral in character. So radicals, they have an overall positive or negative charge and compounds are neutral. So let's see some radicals. Ammonium. Ammonium radical is NH4 plus and hydroxide radical is OH minus. Now this plus charge is for the overall radical. So this is NH4 and this plus charge is for both nitrogen and hydrogen. So this is how this is represented. Okay, how do we get this positive charge here? The valency of nitrogen is minus 3 and the valency of each hydrogen atom is plus 1. So we have 4 hydrogen atoms. So we get minus 3 plus 4 which is equal to plus 1. And this plus 1, when we do not write a 1 here, this means plus 1. So this plus 1 is the overall charge for this ammonium radical. So this can be represented as NH4 plus or at times to avoid discrepancy. This can also be represented as NH4 plus. But most of the time you will see it represented like this. So this plus charge shows that it's for the entire ammonium radical. Similarly, when you have OH minus, so the valency of oxygen is minus 2, valency of hydrogen is plus 1. So the overall charge becomes minus 1. So this hydroxide radical has overall negative 1 charge. So this is a positive radical, ammonium radical, and hydroxide radical is a negative radical. So radicals can be both positive or negative. So these are some other radicals. So you see sulfite radical is SO3 2 minus and sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So now there is another system of naming them. When there are lesser number of oxygen atoms, they are given the suffix I. When there are greater number of oxygen atoms, it's given the suffix 8. If you'll observe these two radicals, you see that this radical has lesser number of oxygen atoms, this has greater number of oxygen atoms, and this is the only difference between these two atoms. So now the first radical is nitrite, and the one with greater number of oxygen atoms has the suffix 8. So this is nitrate. The presence of I and 8 shows the presence of oxygen in the radical. So any time if you encounter a radical which has I or 8 in the suffix, that always means that there is the presence of oxygen in the radical. Out of PO3, 3 minus and PO4, 3 minus, the phosphide radical is. 
So which of the two do you think is the phosphite radical? We know that the suffix it is given to the radical with lesser number of oxygen atoms. And out of these two, this radical has lesser number of oxygen atoms. So this is the phosphite radical. So what should be the name of this radical? This has greater number of oxygen atoms and therefore this should be phosphate radical. Let's look at some other radicals. We have carbonate radical which is CO3 2 minus and bicarbonate radical which is HCO3 minus. Now whenever you see a bi added before the name of a radical, that, that always shows the presence of a hydrogen atom before the radical. So in this case, you see sulfate radical, which is SO4 to minus. And if we have a bisulfate radical, that means there is hydrogen present before SO4. So it becomes HSO4 minus. In this case, the charges are not the same. But the presence of bi before the radical name always shows the presence of hydrogen atom. And since you see 8 present in all the radical names, so this shows the presence of oxygen atoms in the radical. So these are some of the common negative radicals. Most of the radicals that you will see are negative radicals. Only a few radicals like ammonium, they are the positive radicals. Rest all radicals that you will see and use, they are negative radicals. So how do we name the compounds that have radicals? Alright, so these are certain compounds. They have radicals in them. So the first compound is sodium and the radical nitrate. So how do we name it? It's named as sodium nitrate. We always name the positive part first. So we have positive and negative. We know that radicals, most of the time radicals are negative. So the radicals are named after the positive part of the compound. So here sodium, it's positive since it's a metal. Nitrate is negative since it's a negative radical. So we have sodium nitrate. When we have a compound which has a radical, the name of the radical goes as it is. There is no change in the name. Similarly, if we have a compound having aluminium and sulfate radical, so the compound name is aluminium sulfate. There is no change in the name. Similarly, a compound having calcium and phosphate, the name of the compound is calcium phosphate. So there is no change in the name. The positive part is named first and the negative part is named after the positive part. Now we have this green colored compound, chromium sulfate. How do we write the formula of this compound? Let's see. So we have seen this method of naming the compound. Let's go step by step. So the first step says, write the name of the element and the radicals. So in this case, our element is chromium. And we have the radical sulfate. So we write them next to each other. Now we check the valencies. So we have chromium, which has plus 3 valency. And we have sulfate, which has minus 2 valency. So we write these valencies now. So the valency of chromium is plus 3. And valency of sulfate is minus 2. So chromium has plus 3 valency, sulfate has minus 2 valency. The third step involves the interchange of the valencies. So we write chromium, we ignore the positive and negative sign. So we write SO4, we ignore the positive and negative sign. Now we interchange. So the superscript over here becomes the subscript. The superscript over here becomes the subscript. Now, if I add this 3 just like this, this is confusing, right? Whether this 3 is with this 4, whether this 3 is with oxygen, or is it with sulfur? So how do we solve this confusion? We put a bracket. So this bracket shows that this subscript 3 is with the entire sulfate radical. So what do we get as the, uh, the formula? We get Cr2 SO4 3. So this is the formula of the compound chromium sulfate. 
So here this 2 shows that there are 2 chromium atoms and this 3 shows that there are 3 sulfate radicals. So this is how we write the formula of a compound containing a radical. So we have a compound aluminium nitrate. What is the formula of this compound? We are given the valencies. The valency of aluminium is plus 3 and the valency of nitrate is minus 1. So now let's try to find the formula of this compound. So we first write the symbols. So let's write the symbol of aluminium and then the symbol of nitrate. We know the valencies of the two. So the valency of aluminium is plus 3 and the valency of nitrate is minus 1. So now we interchange the valencies. So what do we get? We had aluminium, we ignored the positive and negative sign and we have nitrate. So now when we interchange, the superscript here becomes the subscript and the superscript here becomes the subscript. Again, we see that there is this confusion. So we put this within brackets. So what do we get as the formula? We get Al NO3 thrice. Now, you remember we take the HCF. If we take the HCF of 1 and 3, we get 1. So there is no change. When we divide 1 by 1, we get 1. And when we divide 3 by 1, we get 3. So there is no change if we take the HCF. So the formula of the compound aluminium nitrate is AlNO3, the whole thrice. This shows there is one atom of aluminium and there are three nitrate radicals. So this is how we name the radicals and this is how we get the formulae of the compounds containing radicals.